sculpture is the branch of the visual arts that operates in three dimensions. It is one of the plastic arts. Durable sculptural processes originally used carving and modeling in stone, metal, ceramics, wood and other materials but, since modernism, shifts in sculptural process led to an almost complete freedom of materials and process. A wide variety of materials may be worked by removal such as carving, assembled by welding or modeling, or molded, or cast. Sculpture in stone survives far better than works of art in perishable materials, and often represents the majority of the surviving works from ancient cultures. Though conversely traditions of sculpture in wood may have vanished almost entirely, however, most ancient sculpture was brightly painted, and this has been lost. Sculpture has been central in religious devotion in many cultures, and until recent centuries large sculptures, too expensive for private individuals to create, were usually an expression of religion or politics. Those cultures whose sculptures have survived in quantities include the cultures of the ancient Mediterranean, India and China, as well as many in South America and Africa. The Western tradition of sculpture began in ancient Greece, and Greece is widely seen as producing great masterpieces in the classical period. During the Middle Ages, Gothic sculpture represented the agonies and passions of the Christian faith. The revival of classical models in the Renaissance produced famous sculptures such as Michelangelo's David. Modernist sculpture moved away from traditional processes and the emphasis on the depiction of the human body. With the making of constructed sculpture and the presentation of found objects as finished artworks, types of sculpture, a basic distinction is between sculpture in the round, freestanding sculpture, such as statues, not attached to any other surface, and the various types of relief, which are at least partly attached to a background surface. Relief is often classified by the degree of projection from the wall into low or bar relief, high relief, and sometimes an intermediate mid-relief. Sunk relief is a technique restricted to ancient Egypt. Relief is the usual sculptural medium for large figure groups and narrative subjects, which are difficult to accomplish in the round, and is the typical technique used both for architectural sculpture, which is attached to buildings, and for small-scale sculpture decorating other objects, as in much pottery, metalwork, and jewelry. Relief sculpture may also decorate stelis, upright slabs, usually of stone, often also containing inscriptions. Another basic distinction is between subtractive carving techniques, which remove material from an existing block or lump, for example of stone or wood, and modeling techniques which shape or build up the work from the material. Techniques such as casting, stamping and molding use an intermediate matrix containing the design to produce the work. Many of these allow the production of several copies. The term sculpture is often used mainly to describe large works, which are sometimes called monumental sculpture, meaning either or both of sculpture that is large or that is attached to a building. But the term properly covers many types of small works in three dimensions using the same techniques, including coins and medals, hard stone carvings, a term for small carvings in stone that can take detailed work. The very large or colossal statue has had an enduring appeal since antiquity. The largest on record at 128 meters is the 2002 Chinese Spring Temple, Buddha. Another grand form of portrait sculpture is the equestrian statue of a rider on horse which has become rare in recent decades. The smallest forms of life-size portrait sculpture are the head, showing just that, or the bust, a representation of a person from the chest up. Small forms of sculpture include the figurine, normally a statue that is no more than 18 inches tall, and for reliefs the plaquette, medal or coin. Modern and contemporary art have added a number of non-traditional forms of sculpture, including sound sculpture, light sculpture, environmental art. Environmental sculpture, street art sculpture, kinetic sculpture, land art, and site-specific art. Sculpture is an important form of public art. 
A collection of sculpture in a garden setting can be called a sculpture garden. Purposes and Subjects One of the most common purposes of sculpture is in some form of association with religion. Cult images are common in many cultures, though they are often not the colossal statues of deities which characterize ancient Greek art, like the statue of Zeus at Olympia. The actual cult images in the innermost sanctuaries of Egyptian temples, of which none have survived, were evidently rather small, even in the largest temples. The same is often true in Hinduism, where the very simple and ancient form of the lingam is the most common. Buddhism brought the sculpture of religious figures to East Asia, where there seems to have been no earlier equivalent tradition. There again simple shapes like the Bai and Kong probably had religious significance. Small sculptures as personal possessions go back to the earliest prehistoric art, and the use of very large sculpture as public art, especially to impress the viewer with the power of a ruler, goes back at least to the Great Sphinx of some 4,500 years ago. In archaeology and art history the appearance, and sometimes disappearance, if large or monumental sculpture in a culture is regarded as of great significance. Though tracing the emergence is often complicated by the presumed existence of sculpture in wood and other perishable materials of which no record remains, the totem pole is an example of a tradition of monumental sculpture in wood that would leave no traces for archaeology. The ability to summon the resources to create monumental sculpture by transporting usually very heavy materials and arranging for the payment of what are usually regarded as full-time sculptors, is considered a mark of a relatively advanced culture in terms of social organization. Recent unexpected discoveries of ancient Chinese Bronze Age figures at Sankingdui, some more than twice human size have disturbed many ideas held about early Chinese civilization, since only much smaller bronzes were previously known. Some undoubtedly advanced cultures, such as the Indus Valley Civilization, appear to have had no monumental sculpture at all, though producing very sophisticated figurines and seals. The Mississippian culture seems to have been progressing towards its use with small stone figures when it collapsed. Other cultures, such as ancient Egypt and the Easter Island culture, seem to have devoted enormous resources to very large-scale monumental sculpture from a very early stage. The collecting of sculpture, including that of earlier periods, goes back some 2,000 years in Greece, China and Mesoamerica, and many collections were available on semi-public display long before the modern museum was invented. From the 20th century the relatively restricted range of subjects found in large sculpture expanded greatly, with abstract subjects and the use or representation of any type of subject now common. Today much sculpture is made for intermittent display in galleries and museums, and the ability to transport and store the increasingly large works is a factor in the construction. Small decorative figurines, most often in ceramics, are as popular today as they were in the Rococo, or in ancient Greece when Tanagra figurines were a major industry, or in East Asian and pre-Columbian art. Small sculpted fittings for furniture and other objects go well back into antiquity, as in the Nimrud ivories, Bagram ivories and finds from the tomb of Tutankhamun. Portrait sculpture began in Egypt, where the Nama palette shows a ruler of the 32nd century BCE, and Mesopotamia, where we have 27 surviving statues of Gudi, who ruled Lagashti, 2144-2124 BCE. In ancient Greece and Rome the erection of a portrait statue in a public place was almost the highest mark of honor, and the ambition of the elite who might also be depicted on a coin. In other cultures such as Egypt and the Near East public statues were almost exclusively the preserve of the ruler, with other wealthy people only being portrayed in their tombs. Rulers are typically the only people given portraits in pre-Columbian cultures, beginning with the Olmec colossal heads of about 3,000 years ago. East Asian portrait sculpture was entirely religious. 
with leading clergy being commemorated with statues, especially the founders of monasteries, but not rulers or ancestors. The Mediterranean tradition revived, initially only for two effigies and coins, in the Middle Ages, but expanded greatly in the Renaissance which invented new forms such as the personal portrait medal. Animals are, with the human figure, the earliest subject for sculpture, and have always been popular, sometimes realistic, but often imaginary monsters. In China animals and monsters are almost the only traditional subjects for stone sculpture outside tombs and temples. The kingdom of plants is important only in jewelry and decorative reliefs. But these form almost all the large sculpture of Byzantine art and Islamic art, and are very important in most Eurasian traditions, where motifs such as the palmet and vine scroll have passed east and west for over two millennia. One form of sculpture found in many prehistoric cultures around the world is specially enlarged versions of ordinary tools weapons or vessels created in impractical precious materials, for either some form of ceremonial use or display or as offerings. Jade or other types of greenstone were used in China, Olmec Mexico, and Neolithic Europe. And in early Mesopotamia large pottery shapes were produced in stone. Bronze was used in Europe and China for large axes and blades, like the ox product. Materials and Techniques the materials used in sculpture are diverse, changing throughout history. The classic materials, with outstanding durability, are metal, especially bronze, stone and pottery, with wood, bone and antler less durable but cheaper options. Precious materials such as gold, silver, jade, and ivory are often used for small luxury works, and sometimes in larger ones, as in chryselephantine statues. More common and less expensive materials were used for sculpture for wider consumption, including hardwoods, terracotta and other ceramics, wax, and cast metals such as pewter and zinc. But a vast number of other materials have been used as part of sculptures in ethnographic and ancient works as much as modern ones. Sculptures are often painted, but commonly lose their paint to time, or restorers. Many different painting techniques have been used in making sculpture, including tempera, oil painting, gilding, house paint, aerosol, enamel and sandblasting. Many sculptors seek new ways and materials to make art. One of Pablo Picasso's most famous sculptures included bicycle parts. Alexander Calder and other modernists made spectacular use of painted steel. Since the 1960s, acrylics and other plastics have been used as well. Andy Goldsworthy makes his unusually ephemeral sculptures from almost entirely natural materials in natural settings. Some sculpture, such as ice sculpture, sand sculpture, and gas sculpture, is deliberately short-lived. Recent sculptors have used stained glass tools, machine parts, hardware and consumer packaging to fashion their works. Sculptors sometimes use found objects, and Chinese scholars' rocks have been appreciated for many centuries. Stone stone sculpture is an ancient activity where pieces of rough natural stone are shaped by the controlled removal of stone. Owing to the permanence of the material, evidence can be found that even the earliest societies indulged in some form of stone work. Though not all areas of the world have such abundance of good stone for carving as Egypt, Greece, India and most of Europe. Petroglyphs are perhaps the earliest form. Images created by removing part of a rock surface which remains in situ, by incising, pecking, carving, and abrading. Monumental sculpture covers large works, and architectural sculpture, which is attached to buildings. Hardstone carving is the carving for artistic purposes of semi-precious stones such as jade, agate, onyx, rock crystal, sardor carnelian, and a general term for an object made in this way. Alabama
alabaster or mineral gypsum is a soft mineral that is easy to carve for smaller works and still relatively durable. Engraved gems are small carved gems, including cameos, originally used as seal rings. The copying of an original statue in stone, which was very important for ancient Greek statues, which are nearly all known from copies was traditionally achieved by pointing, along with more freehand methods. Pointing involved setting up a grid of string squares on a wooden frame surrounding the original, and then measuring the position on the grid and the distance between grid and statue of a series of individual points, and then using this information to carve into the block from which the copy is made. Metal bronze and related copper alloys are the oldest and still the most popular metals for cast metal sculptures. A cast bronze sculpture is often called simply a bronze. Common bronze alloys have the unusual and desirable property of expanding slightly just before they set, thus filling the finest details of a mold. Their strength and lack of brittleness is an advantage when figures in action are to be created, especially when compared to various ceramic or stone materials. Gold is the softest and most precious metal, and very important in jewelry. With silver it is soft enough to be worked with hammers and other tools as well as cast repousse and chasing are among the techniques used in gold and silversmithing. Casting is a group of manufacturing processes by which a liquid material is poured into a mold, which contains a hollow cavity of the desired shape, and then allowed to solidify. The solid casting is then ejected or broken out to complete the process, although a final stage of cold work may follow on the finished cast. Casting may be used to form hot liquid metals or various materials that cold set after mixing of components. Casting is most often used for making complex shapes that would be otherwise difficult or uneconomical to make by other methods. The oldest surviving casting is a copper Mesopotamian frog from 3200 BC. Specific techniques include lost wax casting, plaster mold casting and sand casting. Glass glass may be used for sculpture through a wide range of working techniques, though the use of it for large works is a recent development. It can be carved with considerable difficulty. The Roman-like Hergus cup is all but unique. Hot casting can be done by ladling molten glass into molds that have been created by pressing shapes into sand, carved graphite or detailed plaster, silica molds. Kiln casting glass involves heating chunks of glass in a kiln until they are liquid and flow into a waiting mold below it in the kiln. Glass can also be blown and or hot sculpted with hand tools either as a solid mass or as a part of a blown object. Pottery pottery is one of the oldest materials for sculpture, as well as clay being the medium in which many sculptures cast in metal are originally modeled for casting. Sculptors often build small preliminary works called maquettes of ephemeral materials such as plaster of Paris, wax, unfired clay, or plasticine. Many cultures have produced pottery which combines a function as a vessel with a sculptural form, and small figurines have often been as popular as they are in modern Western culture. Stamps and molds were used by most ancient civilizations, from ancient Roman Mesopotamia to China. Wood carving Wood carving has been extremely widely practiced, but survives much less well than the other main materials, being vulnerable to decay, insect damage, and fire. It therefore forms an important hidden element in the art history of many cultures. Outdoor wood sculpture does not last long in most parts of the world, so that we have little idea how the totem pole tradition developed. Many of the most important sculptures of China and Japan in particular are in wood, and the great majority of African sculpture and that of Oceania and other regions. Wood is light, so suitable for masks and other sculpture intended to be carried, and can take very fine detail. It is also much easier to work than stone. It has been very often painted after carving, but the paint wears less well than the wood, and is often missing in surviving pieces. Painted wood is often technically described as wood in polychrome. Typically a layer of gesso or plaster is applied to the wood, and then the paint is applied to that. Social status of sculptors 
Worldwide, sculptors have usually been tradesmen whose work is unsigned in some traditions, for example China, where sculpture did not share the prestige of literati painting. This has affected the status of sculpture itself. Even in ancient Greece, where sculptors such as Phidias became famous, they appear to have retained much the same social status as other artisans and perhaps not much greater financial rewards, although some signed their works. In the Middle Ages artists such as the 12th century Gizalbetis sometimes signed their work, and were sought after by different cities, especially from the Trecento onwards in Italy, with figures such as Arnafor di Cambio, and Nicola Pisano and his son Giovanni. Goldsmiths and jewelers, dealing with precious materials and often doubling as bankers, belonged to powerful guilds and had considerable status, often holding civic office. Many sculptors also practiced in other arts, Andrea del Verrocchio also painted, and Giovanni Pisano, Michelangelo, and Jacopo Sansovino were architects. Some sculptors maintained large workshops. Even in the Renaissance the physical nature of the work was perceived by Leonardo da Vinci and others as pulling down the status of sculpture in the arts. Though the reputation of Michelangelo perhaps put this long-held idea to rest, from the high Renaissance artists such as Michelangelo, Leone Leone and Giambologna could become wealthy and ennobled and enter the circle of princes, after a period of sharp argument over the relative status of sculpture and painting. Much decorative sculpture on buildings remained a trade, but sculptors producing individual pieces were recognized on a level with painters. From the 18th century or earlier sculpture also attracted middle-class students, although it was slower to do so than painting. Women sculptors took longer to appear than women painters, and were less prominent until the 20th century.